Right, so there's a second part to 7.3, and that is called partial fractions. Uh, like I mentioned to you earlier, uh, this is a really important topic for, for calculus. Uh, and the reason why it's in here is you end up solving systems of linear equations. We perhaps don't have to do all the formal process of solving the linear systems of equations in this uh, section here by using Gaussian elimination. Uh, but nonetheless, we need to solve a set of linear equations. And there are some pretty uh, cool tricks of how to, how to do those, okay? So what do I mean by partial fractions, okay? What I mean is, uh, let's see, what am I doing? Oh, I want that. Oh, okay. Uh, what I'm saying is that here is a fraction or a rational function, and it's split up into this sum of two simpler uh, fractions. Why we do this, uh, you will know next time, by this time next year, you will not only know this, but you will be actually using it uh, to do some techniques in calculus called integration. Okay. Um, so my claim to you is that these two things are equal. What I mean is this is equal to this. And we can see that if we were to put this in a graph and calculate it and graph each side, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and do that for you. Uh, go into y equals, uh, clear that, clear that, enter the two sides. Uh, please make sure you're using protection appropriately. And then I get uh, x squared, uh, negative x, uh, negative 6, uh, divided by, no, that's it. Uh, let's just check that, x plus 7 over x squared minus x minus 6. And the next equation is 2 divided by protection, please, uh, x minus 3 uh, neg minus uh, 1 divided by protection, x plus 2. Okay. And so those are my two equations. Uh, I'm going to first of all uh, disable this one by unhighlighting it. Just graph my first equation, see what it looks like. Looks like that. I'm going to go back and enable the bottom one, uh, and hopefully, if I've entered it correctly, it should sit right on top of each other. Ooh, some funky thing happened. So I, mm, not nice, let's go check. X plus seven, x squared minus x minus six. Uh, 2 over x minus 3 minus 1 over x plus 2. Uh, check by combining the right hand side of each side separately, ensure they are equal. Um, I guess that's supposed to be meant algebraically. Uh, let's go take a look at the table and see if there's something else that's going on. Hmm. Um, okay, well, I guess I'm going to try and do it algebraically and see if they're equal. Okay, so I'm going to combine these two. So my common denominator is going to be x minus 3 times x plus 2. I'm going to cross multiply. So I get 2x plus 4 minus x plus 3, which then translates to uh, x plus 7 over x minus 3 over x plus 2, which is what. And one more step. If I foil the downstairs, I get x squared uh, minus x minus 6. So that is indeed equal to that. Now, why they don't show up graphically, I'm not kind of too sure about it. Um, it does bug me. Let's go take a look again, see what's going on here. I'm going to pause here for a minute, okay? Okay, so I guess I'm not sure what actually happened. Uh, I just went and did what I do to uh, do a Zach on, on my emulator here. Um, so that, that's Y1. Uh, here's my Y2. Um, I get 2 divided by protection x minus 3 uh, minus 1 divided by uh, parentheses x plus 2 and graph that. And let's go look at second table. 
and the y value should be identical. Okay, and I'm happy now. So if in doubt, do a Zach. All right, uh, how do I go about, uh, how do I go about uh, breaking these things up, okay? So uh, there's a whole bunch of rules on uh, page 501 in your textbook. Spend a minute going over it, make sure um, you understand that, and I will be doing some examples for you, okay? So uh, go ahead and view that before you start looking at these examples, okay? Uh, let's go work on the example. Okay, so here is my uh, fraction. I want to write it in a partial fraction. So my first step is to actually factor out the bottom. So I'm going to write this as 7 over x times x minus 14. Okay. So uh, what you want to do is you want to make the, uh, the denominator a product of linear factors, okay, linear factors. So x is a linear factor, x minus 14 is another linear factor. Then according to the rules on page 501, this is equivalent to a over x plus b over x minus 14. So just a quick uh, recap on those rules. Um, if the bottom, if the denominator is a linear factor, then the top is going to be a constant. A and B is a constant that I need to figure out. Okay, I don't know what they are. I need to figure that out. So since the denominator here is x, which is linear, the upstairs is going to be a constant. Since the denominator here is linear, upstairs is also going to be a constant. Had this been an x squared, then this would have been ax plus b kind of stuff, okay? So uh, again, read the rules on page 501. Okay? I can't emphasize enough that you go follow that. Okay, the goal here is to find A and B. So now what happens that if I times everything by X times X minus 14, okay, on the left-hand side, on this side, I get a 7. On the other side, I get A times X minus 14 plus B of X. Now, there are two ways of solving for A and B here, okay? The book's way is called equating coefficients, and I'll show you that first, equating coefficients. What do I mean by that? I said, okay, uh, take a look at coefficient of x. On the left-hand side, okay, on the left-hand side, since there is no x, uh, it's a 0. On the right-hand side,